I want to talk more this morning about two things. About two things. It's important to know how, how what is free stocking. Free stocking uh, can be defined as the act of introducing fishes into the water. It can be defined as the act of introducing fishes into the water. When we say introducing fishes into the water, there are also techniques, there are systems. Of introducing fishes into the water. There are conditions that must be in place for introducing fishes into the water. And there are different levels of introduction. The introduction is not limited to the first time you purchase fish from a farm and you are not bringing it to your own farm to rear. That's not just, that's not where it stops and ends. That was starts and ends. You know, there's more to fish stocking. For example, when you have collected them from your source farm to your farm, and you do that, that's one introduction. There's another introduction, another level of introduction. For example, you want to do sorting and grading. So you need to know how to, what and what to do to prepare the fishes for stocking, restocking. Because you have took, taken out water and then you have um, picked, selected some large ones, some average ones, some medium ones, some of the smaller sizes, and you are going to reintroduce them into another water bowl. Maybe you have prepared uh, other smaller ponds where you are going to put them. So you should know what and what you should do to reintroduce them. You know, I was in a farm yesterday evening and then. Um, Person already has mature fish. Precisely that farm I brought those fishes from. Person already has mature fish and has growing ones too in a very small place. But wants to now reintroduce them into a bigger space. Apparently, being no what and what should do. So it is important that you also know the various steps that you need to put in place when you are doing stocking and at different levels. Um, let me first draw. Uh, pond, something like the water body. your pond, for example. Huh? There is... This is important for stocking. This is important for stocking. Your water level, for example, you are bringing fish from farm A hmm? to your own farm. You are bringing fish from farm A to your own farm. You should have prepared your pond and have at least three feet water level. Three feet water level in your pond already. This could also be two, three days before the set date of bringing in the fishes. Hmm? So, I've seen some, I saw one <laughs> farmer's experience. 
somebody went to bring 4,000 fingerlings into a farm and the water level was just like this. Maybe it was hoping that maybe when light comes or something, 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 we will fill up the water later. But I think he did this maybe in the evening prior to the other, the day before. By the next day, maybe water had not come. Hmm? And sun was out. Not one finger survived. The 4,000 died. Why? The temperature of the day on the water can make your normal temperature water become hot and it can make a bath under the sun. Depend on your location. Like when I was in Kaduna, um, sometimes temperature could be as high as 43 degrees Celsius. That, that one is too much safe to cause harm. 43 degrees. Could be 40, could be 38, could be 37. Maybe just very hot that day. But when you have your water level up to three feet, then it can absorb the heat, no matter the temperature. The fishes will have enough space to cool off below your pond. I believe we understand. We are getting what I'm explaining. So your water level is important. Don't just say, they uh, didn't tell me, I don't know, this, that. You have an excuse for why you feel. That's what, why I'm explaining this now. You know, so he lost not one you know, survive. If you see this scenario, it was horrible. So it is important that you prepare. It could even be, it may not be like, like I said, that you are just bringing in the fish. The fishes would have been with you for a while. Like yesterday, the way I was there, the pond he was going to transfer the fish to, he had not even washed it. Neither has he even put a drop of water in. And I said, if, if, if uh, why you are why you have drained this water now, where the fishes are in currently, and you discover that something happened, Jen went bad, the water source, something happened, something can happen, pipe can break, anything can happen, and there is no water in the new pond where you are transferring fishes. And the current one where you had your fish with water, you are drained it. So it's important to mention that when you are doing transfer, the water body or pond that you are transferring to, you should have prepared it beforehand. Don't say, uh, when I do this one, then uh, prepare. And when you are preparing, at least your water level should be three feet. Again, you don't fill your pond. You don't fill your pond to the brim. That's to the end here. You have to leave another one foot between the level of the water to the edge of the pond. Why? Uh, your fish can jump out if the water level is full. So there's what we call overflow that you need to put here. Why? In case it rains, if the rain is so heavy, maybe sometimes two days rain, three days rain, and your water was like this before, it will fill it up to this point. But when you have an overflow, and when you have an overflow, if it gets up to that point, it will start coming and it will stop going up. Do we understand? These things, they can, they, are, they can be small, but it will mess you up when you don't take it into cognizance uh, to get them prepared. Uh, another thing is that your fishes can get to that level and jump out. And you, of course, you didn't expect that you, that would happen. So before that time, you just discovered that maybe like 10 fishes, 15, 20, it could be more depending on how many fish you have in the pond, well, on the ground. And maybe that day you didn't come out early or you, you had told somebody to feed fish. Even the fish come, I don't think they will stay by the side of the pond. They will crawl. Fishes can move a long distance, crawling. That's a pond can be here, and you will meet the fish by Imo River. That far, they can go that far. 
especially if it's a sloppy land or it's muddy, just rained, it will even move faster. You know, so all these things are important for um, restocking when you are moving fish from one place to the other. Now, also, there is a filter at this bottom level here. This filter has a valve to control the outlet of water. Then, at this point, it is perforated. You have small holes to allow uh, passage of water from here. Um, if you don't put a filter and it's properly locked, depending on the size of your fish, for example, if it is fingerling fish, at um, when you bring in fingers, you have to put a net. You put nets around these perforated pipes with rubber band to support it, to ensure that your small fish cannot swim out of the perforated pond. As a matter of fact, at that tender age, at fingerling stage, very small, you may want to drain water here, and the pressure from your valve can even trap some fish here and even kill them. So, it's also important that when you know the size, if they are fingerling stage, you should have a net strap here that will prevent to reduce the pressure from trapping them. Again, there are different types of filters. If you have fingerling filters, uh, the pipe, the perforation should be smaller. Just dot dot, very small. Because even if you put a net and the perforation is not small, it will also the pressure will also trap your little fingerlings. But when you have uh, juveniles, your filter can be, you know, a little bit bigger. And, of course, that also goes for uh, then some adult filters. Those ones could be really big. Huh? So, these are all important. What are we talking about? We are talking about reducing casualties. Reducing unforeseen circumstances in your farm. So, this will help you. First, from your fishes, no escaping from this point. For example, you use a subadult filter for fingerlings. Anytime you are draining water, I know you are sending fish to the river. Or any maybe pond, lake, whatever that is closest to you. So you can use subadult filters for fingerlings in your pond, and you there will most be disaster, something wrong, because you are not putting the right Bags in the right holes. Hmm? So we have to take notes of this. Um, I think that's about what I want to mention about this. Then I can move on. Now, uh, there's what we call community involvement. There's what we call community involvement. When we talk about community involvement, it's basically about information. Information. For example, if you are in an area where we have clusters of fish farmers, it will help them to share their experience or experiences with you. And so you can gather information, you can gather knowledge. from community involvement. That is, don't be in isolation. If you have a farm, find out those who have a farm around you. And know, share knowledge from them. Sunday, in your area, if you have found out people that have farm around you, maybe they will have a scheme. And that's another way to cut costs. Maybe they, you will have somebody has a scheme, 
So you don't need to spend 35000 to go and buy a fresh one. Because you only make use of skill once in a while. It's not every day to. So if somebody has a good skill around you, you can cut that cost off. You don't need to buy. Hmm? Um, for example, you want to sell. And then uh, uh, the custom, the farmers around you know people who buy at a better rate. They know retail buyers that buy regularly and buy at a better rate. So instead of you selling at 1,008, 1,900 per kilo, you can you, you, you may have somebody who is ready to buy at 2,200, 2,500. Maybe they are coming from a very far distance and they are buying at a better rate. So information is important. Let's have a network of people who are doing fish farming around your area. It will help. Uh, it will help you. Then also, we have what we also call government agency. Let the government, uh, the fishery departments, your local government, uh, state government, know there are, there are platforms where you can register your farm and all that. So that when they are distributing implements, you would know that stuff like this is going on and then you can partake of it. Are we together? So it's important to let these bodies know what you are doing. It will, it will give you good knowledge. When information is being passed across, you won't be in isolation. You will know what is happening by time. Then monitoring. Another word for me is observation. When you when you observe very well, it will it will help manage the fishes that you have stored. When you when you monitor very well, you are very observant. Fish is all about observation. When you are very observant, it will help you to manage plus minus losses gains. When you are very observant, for example. Your water um, quality, you would know. Oh, I need to this week. I need to change water twice. Next week, three times. From your observation, you will know when you ought to do what ought to be done. You also observe their survival rates. You will know when there is any trouble shooting as a result of your observation. You will know when trouble is likely to is cooking. You will know. You will foresee it, and you can forestall it. For example, if there's supposed to be an outbreak, and you notice one or two fishes with irregularities. For example, their swimming pattern change. The way they usually swim is no longer. And there's one fish that just jumping. Pa, pa, pa. What is happening? If you did not observe, it will. It will. There will be an outbreak. From 1 to 10, from 10 to 100. But when you are observant, you take out, say, 20, 30 minutes every day, stand, especially when you want to feed. You stand, don't just, ah, I know it's three cups in the bam, 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 you just turn your back. You want to go and do all that things. It's common, people do it a lot. But find out a time that is most convenient for you. And Dedicate to it. And one thing about fish, which I trust, is that your fish are, they know when you are interested in them. They are living organisms. You may find it funny. But they know when you are really interested. And so when you come around, they know that you are there. They will gather. They will gather by the side of where you are standing. They will even be raising mouth, doing all manner of things. So, as a result of your constant observation, you will get the message across that they are passing to you part time. You will know when they are hungry. Maybe you just fed them, and for you, they should be fine. They will give you a sign to tell you that that food you gave us is not enough. Add more. Maybe, yeah, maybe uh, you, you are observing your water quality and you feel that uh, if I keep feeding, this water will get bad. 
sooner than expected. Maybe you had planned that tomorrow I will change the water. And the fish are calling for more food. Yeah. Let me not add. If I add, by evening, this water will be stinking bad. And then I'm endangering the lives of the fish. All this can be done by monitoring. It's not what I can just tell you rocket science. You have to monitor to know these things. And that's why I'm giving you the information now. You have to monitor to understand your fish and know. Then, of course, there is another one we call them. Um, the stocking itself. How do you introduce fish to water? How do you introduce fish to water? For example, you say um, you went to you went to bring uh, fish from farm A to farm B. So how do you go about it? Of course, you are not going to. You have you have to have um, uh, bags, containers that are used to transport them from a farm to the other. The containers you are going to use to transport fish from farm A must be thoroughly clean, free from oil, uh, anything that will contaminate the water, and it must be clean. Not necessarily with detergent, but salt. You use salt to disinfect containers. So you use salt and water, just any scrub, foam, sponge, whatever. Salt is a disinfectant uh, that we use to ensure that um, surfaces are clean and free from any infection and whatever that can be harmful to the fishes. So you use a bit of salt, just your normal regular table salt and water. Then, of course, I've explained that you need to prepare your water that you are, you know, you are going to transport the fish into or transfer the fish into. And then when you are about to turn the fish into the water, um, you don't turn the fishes from the container as if you are turning oil from one gallon to the other, or you are turning fuel from one. It's what we call um, gradual introduction. For example, this is your pond. Of course, I've mentioned before, the water level is up to this point. So this is your container with fish from the said farm. Huh? When you when you get to your pond, you take this container and you immerse it into this water with the fish inside. With the fish inside, you carry it and drop it inside the pond. That the water level will cover the surface of the container. Now, when you have done that, the water here will enter this container and overflow out. Hmm? Then you can now tilt the container a bit to this position now, and you keep tilting it till it's at least 90 degrees. Huh? That way, there's what we call osmotic shock. The fishes would not be shocked by the new water that they are being introduced to. So, they are, the water with which you transported them is still inside the container when you put it into the new water hole. And it is this one, by submerging it, this water here has entered this one already. So, it is not a swift change. So, it's a gradual change from the temperature of the water you have brought them in to the new one. And so, they will gradually swim out. Then, you now start raising the bottom of this container. When it has been submerged, still it is everything inside the fish is completely out. So, it is not a system of you are turning water, you 
just bend it up like this, blah, 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 blah. No. It will, some, you will lose some fish like that. You will lose some fish like that. So just do it the way I've explained. Gradual introduction, you immerse the container and tilt it. Then you allow them to swim out because of course that container you brought them with has an opening for air. Hmm? So you allow them to, you open it more, depending on the opening it has, then you allow them to swim out and just help them gradually into the water. That way, you would, your, the survival rates would be more. That way, survival rates will be more. Then of course, um, this is for mostly any of the system, whether it is cage, whether it is um, your concrete pond, tapering pond, whatever it is, even in your eating pond, you can do same. Even in your eating pond, you can do same. So I, I think um, that's that will be that for that. So your water temperature, I, I mentioned just now that it's important that you check your water temperature from the new ones you are bringing in to the old ones. So if you know one thing about fish family is that if you follow the procedures without trying to be a superman or you want to invent something new, you will naturally not have issues at all. You won't have issues. But when yes, when you when you want to do something new, there are conditions, there are consequences for that action you are taking, and you must be sure that you have checked all the parameters and you won't have any problem before you carry out something new. For example, if this water is not up to three feet that you are introducing these species into, you are likely going to, I don't know, maybe it's a sunny day, I don't know the time of the day you are introducing these species. There are different conditions. So let's just work with what I've explained. And I think as you become more uh, professional in in your practice, you will know how to go along. Another thing we'll look at is the quality of the fish you are bringing in. What's the quality? The fingerling's quality. Number one, their health. How healthy are they? How active? What is their history? These are good factors. History involves parents. Uh, reproductive uh, reproduction uh, history involves also their age, their age, how old are they, and you must trust to deal with a good uh, archery house because some of them are not sincere. They may sell feed fishes that are that are sick to you. So are they disease free? And also, you must also know what to look out for as an experienced farmer when you are procuring all this. So, don't just go with one eye, have a second eye. Let somebody who is more experienced than you are help you to then help you to look at this. The other thing is, there are appropriate sizes. When we say appropriate sizes, we are talking about regular sizes. You shouldn't have, from inception, as you are introducing them, you shouldn't have very big ones mixed with average sizes, mixed with very small sizes. You are going to have increased rate of cannibalism. They will, they will cannibalize on each other very well because the sizes are not appropriate. 
there's too many variations in the sizes. So that will help to curtail the percentage of cannibalism you will have if they are more of the same sizes. But when you have disparity in the sizes, you have uh, you bought 1,000 fishes, 200 are very big, 500 are very small, another 100 are giant size, and you mix them all together. At the end of that, uh, within one month, your 1,000 fish will be like 400 or 500. And it's not because they died, they were they cannibalize on each other because your sizes at the start at the world go was inappropriate. You had too many inappropriate sizes in your store. You should watch out for that. Don't don't say they are doing you a favor. I might meet some big big ones join her. No, that guy is just trying to sell. You should watch out because except those sizes are being put in a separate container and you are putting them in a separate water body in a separate bond but if you are putting everything you took them from separate containers from the farm and you are coming to introduce them into one particular pond see it's not good you are going to they are going to cannibalize fishes eat each other you know, you don't need rocket science to do. Fishes eat each other. So it is best when same sizes can compete for food, compete for space equally. Why you put a giant and a dwarf in a in same space? You are not giving them the same level field to compete. I hope we we'll, we'll understand the importance of all these little things. So appropriate size. Then of course for eating porn, if you are doing eating porn, uh, stocking timing is typical in the raining season <coughs> where you can have uh, fresh water being replaced, replenished from the rain for eating porn. The best time to stock your fishes from eating porn is during the raining season, not during dry season. For eating porn, it is best to stock your fishes during the raining season, where the rain can also contribute to the water and the water body generally in that environment for eating pond. And I hope we know now, I've explained what eating pond is before. So I don't have to go about it. Now, stocking density. There are two sides to stocking density. There are two sides to stocking density. One of the side is that if you overstock it will lead to slow growth your fishes will not grow fast and also when you overstock there is more tendency for outbreak of diseases and difficult for you to control when you overstock. I gave us an example, I think on our first lecture, with the Guinness stand. This stand they use in importing the brewing material into the country is averagely 1,000 liters. So, and I said that day that, uh, this is about stocking now. I said that day that I would, if I was to stock, I would not be stocking more than 75 fishes. More than 75. Now, like, and I also mentioned that day that the person that stocks 200 in this same space, even 150 in this same space does not, does not expect that our fishes will grow at the same rate. Because I have fewer fish in the same space where it has more fishes. My fishes have the advantage to grow better. The only condition you get to miss out when you 
The second side is on that stocking. When you don't stock up to, for example, and I put, and I put um, 20 fishes instead of maybe 70, 75, is that I will underutilize my resources, which will do less harm to me than overstocking with more numbers. So we have to take um, cognizance of that. Two sides, underutilization of your resources and um, overcrowding. So those are two sides. Of course, which will take effect on their growth and um, also your feed uh, conversion ratio. It will, it, this is very important for it also. It's not just the quality of food that you are using, the space that they also have is also another factor. The space that they have will also influence how the fish convert your food because it's a factor and a very uh, important one. Last but not the least on this is your species. The species of stocking. Of course, depending on what you want to achieve, but I may mention that we have majorly two predominant uh, species that uh, I call of economic and ecological value for us for now, which is tilapia and catfish. So those two species are widely accepted and widely farmed, bred, orchard, even in breeding and all. So uh, those are the two species that of more they have the highest market value. Currently they have the highest so that's for the species. So on that fish talking, we have mentioned a lot. Now I also play another emphasis on water. The subject of water cannot be overemphasized. Why? Because as long as fish farming is concerned, you are being everything has to do with water. So the more knowledge you have about water, the better you can manage your fish farm. The more knowledge you have about water, the better you can manage your fish farm. One of the Factors we can look at is also um, periodic water exchange. The more often you do this, depending on your water body, the number of fishes, and all that. The more often you do this, the more it is for you to have a healthy production. Production that is free from disease, free from uh, any outbreak of any kind. The more you can control predators influence, pest influence on your fish because you have periodic water exchange. For example, this also has to do with conversion ratio. It has to do with spacing. The more you change your water, if we have the same conditions, when I say the same conditions, using that one liter, 1,000 liter container water, and I have 75 fish, and you also have 75 fish in your pond. If I change my water twice a week, if I change my water twice a week, and you change your water once a week, don't expect, even if we have the same fish from the same source, 
my fish will do better than this. Because of periodic water exchange. So that's why I say these things are factors being put together. It's not just one thing. You have to bring it, and it all it matters. It contributes its own water. Now, when you change your water often, there's what we call dissolved oxygen inside water. That will also help your fish to digest food faster. The more oxygen you have available in the water, the more their digestive process, the more they can convert your protein to flesh. So, the more exchange of water you do, the better living condition of the fish. Again, there's also some equipment you can use to increase dissolved oxygen in your water. There's what we call um, aerators. An example of aerator is what we call um, tidal wind. Tidal wind. I'm in the mind. YouTube is there, one of the shots. You see it there, it's, it moves like, like a bicycle. It's on, it floats on the water and it has a paddle that rotates on the water. So as it's rotating, it's causing bubbles. And as it causes bubbles, it brings about more dissolved oxygen in the water. So you can check it out on YouTube. The, 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 you see it. It's just on floating on the water and it's rotating, causing splashes of water and increasing dissolved oxygen in the water. There's also what you call uh, aerators. They are equipment that pump air and they have attached with it what we call air stone. Rough edges made of stone. So there's air being pumped from an equipment. Electricity or solar, whatever. Then air is being pumped here, and this creates bubbles in the water. This also helps to add more dissolved oxygen in the water. Of course, um, you have to use maybe solar, maybe electricity, whatever is best for you. Of course, anything with solar is better for now. To reduce uh, the operating costs. So that can also. Uh, your poor water management, of course, will expose you. You know, I, I made an instance the other day that in us, there are. Should I say. Diseases, infections, bacteria, viral infections in our body. But they will not come out until we are stressed. I mentioned it in one of our lectures. They will not come out until they are stressed. And what causes stress in fish? One of the causes is poor water management. Why we say poor water management? It's not all about changing water, but it's also about how you change the water. For example, oh, your water is dirty, you want to change water, you now start changing your water by 12 noon when the sun is very hot. Huh? That's poor water management. And that way you are stressing the fish. You are stressing them. Then again, is that some people will wait, they will drain the water, the pond is already dry. You are waiting 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. What fresh water has not started entering the pond? Then you now go and feed the water. You have already stressed the fish. <laughs> Forget that you have changed the water. You have stressed them. And of course, you can start having casualties. As a result of that stress that you are giving to them. Yes, you have done something good. You have changed the water. 
But how did you do it? Your method of changing water has brought stress to the fish. So definitely, as a result of that stress, you can now see that somebody who was who had malaria in the system, because of that stress, that comes down with malaria. Normally, he would have been able to go about his business of the day without coming down. But as a result of that stress, you are down with malaria. So your fish would have any form of infection in the body, but has been able to manage it before now. But immediately you stress them by anything, any of the good thing you are doing to them, you have you are stressed them. Okay, let's take for example you are feeding now. And while you are feeding, um, instead of you to patiently feed them on demand, gradually introducing it as we have talked about it, Gradually, until as they are consuming it, you are adding. As they are consuming it, you are adding. You just got the two two bowls of uh, whatever you are using to measure and pour it on the water. The fish will obviously come, pick what they can pick, and there's leftover. So you have done a good thing by feeding, but you have done the feeding wrongly by having leftover on the water, and maybe you, you didn't even take the leftover out. All the condiments that that feed was made with. We, you know, there's also oil in their food. So it will form oil on the surface of the water, impeding their breathing. Yes, when there's clothes of oil on the water, it will hamper their breathing. And you will contaminate the water, the water in which they are living. So that way, you have done something good, but in a wrong way. And that will affect your fish. So, it is important that you know anything that has to do with your water. You have a proper management of your water. Of course, this will also prevent any outbreak. Because fish will do well without having any issue from day one to when you sell. Sunday, did you have any any issue the first one you did? Any outbreak of any kind? You did? Okay. So you will discover that why that happened is as a result of all the things we are saying now. So you don't have to have the same experience because you are in the class now. Sunday was not in the class before he started. You understand? So learn from what we are saying and prevent all those things. When you say you have losses, some of them people will not tell you. <laughs> but it's money. And that is that precious money that you need to expand your business. And when you start having it as losses, that's not good for you. It's not good for you. Now, I, I didn't mention before, but now in water management, your monitoring will let you know that the ammonia, there are chemicals in your water, the ammonia content in your water as a result of the physics. Huh? Maybe your water is covered. Maybe you, you put your pond under a shade so there's no penetration of sunlight into that water. All this will increase what we call ammonia in your water. And if you are not monitoring it well, ammonia would impede their breathing, will make the water polluted, and then they will be scrambling for air. You see the water brownish. You see the water, this, this happens a lot, especially in controlled ponds. Concrete ponds, uh, tabouli ponds, plastic ponds. It happens mostly because you have limited water in all those um, environments. But it will really happen in ethyl pond. But the only reason why it will happen in ethyl pond is when you have you have overstocked the pond. For example, we are in a pond uh, opposite the farm where we are um, where we are trying to put up some maintain some pond. Here. And I asked them how many fish can be in this one, and they gave me a number. And I said, hey, what, what is it? <laughs> you know, calm down. You know, that you see a big space, it does not just mean that. That's how you stop the place. You, you, you do what it's, you give some levity. Even if you know that 20,000 can stay here, first of all, how much do you have to train your fish, to rear your fish? Do you have the budget for 20,000? That a pond can take 20,000 does not mean you throw in 20,000 inside. 
on your budget, do you have money for 20,000? How much will it cost to raise 1,000 for six months? Do you understand? How much will it cost to raise 1,000? So if you see a water body of that can take 20,000, the first thing that will come to your mind is not the 20,000 fish that you can put inside there. Because it's very cheap to buy it and put there. But what should come to your heart first is how much will it cost me to wear that 20,000? So by the time you have checked your budget, maybe it's 5,000 you can actually stock. Do that. The, what should influence your stocking capacity is your budget, not the space. Hello? Uh, yes. It's your budget, not the space. And don't stock according to promise. And my uncle has promised me 2.5. My auntie promised me 1.5. My cousin promised me 1 million. My nephew promised me 1.2. So if I put all these promises, it comes to 8 million. That means I can stock 8,000 fishes or 10,000 fishes. That's not how to stock tissue. If they promised you 10 million altogether, the one that has come to your hand, that's the one you used to plan. Not the one that is hanging in the sky. You say, ah, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, the pond do you have? How many fish can you say, ah, okay. Can stop and say, hey, okay, okay, stop it. That's not how to treat fish. Don't, don't, do, don't, don't follow such advice from wherever it's coming from. What you should follow is the money in your hand. Ah, eh, I'm giving you 10 million, but hold this 1 million. That 1 million he has given you, that's what you should do to plan your fish. Don't plan it on the balance 9 million that is with him, that has not, that has not got into your hand. It's important. No. I've seen people who now have their fish prematurely because one person somewhere promised to send them money or send them feed and they are not by, by, uh, banking on that to rear their fish. No. It's wrong. Whatever anybody promises you, wait if you can wait till you get what they promise you, then you plan with it. Otherwise, if you are to start, start with what you have. What you can now do is that when those other promises come, create another pond and stock according to what you have. For example, if the money comes uh, two million, two million. Let's even assume that they will fulfill their promise. One million, one million. This is six million. If this one is at hand, plan with this. If you have one pump that can take, say, 2,500 fish, and you have looked at it that this two million will be enough for you, store this. Are we getting it? These are things that have happened to people before. Don't let it, don't allow it to happen to you. Now, when this man comes, assuming the money comes, when this another two million comes, it now becomes at hand. Then, if you don't have another pump, with the money they have given you, plan for a pump. And after planning for the pump, uh, maybe it even came two months apart. Huh? You see that you cannot come and add new juveniles to this one because by that time they are going to some adults. So, with this new money with you, plan a pond if you don't have. After you have planned the pond, you will know okay, I have maybe 1.5 left with me because you didn't have pond before. Then, with that 1.5, you now plan how many fish can I stop with this? Don't start that. Oh, I am expecting six million. Then you go and stock six thousand or seven thousand, hoping that by the feed you are going to buy, before they finish it, these two million will have come. Don't do that because these two million can delay, and your fishes are just three months with the balanced money you had. They just go to three months, and you have been calling. Number is not reachable. <laughs> well, 
This thing happened to me. So I'm not just telling you how to go. I'm telling you experience. So, or it could be genuine. Maybe you had a job and you have planned with your job that every month I'll be buying 20 bags. God forbid you exact. And you have already put it in order. It was a genuine intention. No, it was a genuine intention. You have already put fish in water. So, what happened? Which one are you going to buy on time? Your survivor or the survivor of the fish in water? Why are you going to lose that? You know, because you have to feed. Maybe you have a family. You have children going to school. You have bills to pay. You have last rent. You have those things. And it's important. <laughs> Uh, this is first time experience I'm telling you. So plan with the money at hand. If you are, ex you are expecting to save, save first. There will be always market for fish. It's not running away. It's not running away. Save first. Because even when you are planning to use your salary, all for this are not happen. You can get sick. You can get anything can happen. Oh, or it's not even you. Somebody close to you, they say, ah, my papa has died, you bury her is three weeks' time. So, are you going to go and buy fish food? And you will not bury your father. <laughs> no, it's, it's happened. It happened. And then, fish that you have projected, they will get to 2 kg, 1.5 kg. Before I sell, you discover that you will not start begging market to me. Please, who has a problem? Everybody now knows your problem because you are ready fish. <laughs> Eh? So we can avoid that. Plan with what you have. Don't, don't, uh, don't plan from abstract. Plan with what is at hand. Hmm? Then of course our water source could be ponds, lakes, rivers, and boreholes. You know, if you put all these things together, you will see that it is important that. There is no point that is not relevant. There is no point that is not relevant. But having put them together, they will, you will not become a professional. Putting them together makes you a professional. When you take only one out and use a wrong with, you become an amateur. Somebody who is not knowledgeable in that field. But if you put these things together, you will be sound. Even if you come to talk, you should be at the end of this lecture, you should be able to give lectures. Even if you don't have the experience, but you should be able to give the lecture. And of course, you will still have practicals as we go on. I told you, we we'll do fish breeding, and then you will see fishes, we will have, we'll do more practical classes. So, you will have even the experience as well. So, you should be able to dish out this knowledge that you have received. That's why I'm not bombarding you at the time so much. I just do a summary of what I know you can assimilate, and I just give it to you part time. But if you put every factor together, you should be a champion. I'm telling you, you should be a champion. 